the seven pillars of wisdom. There was nothing, there was nothing. And then there was everything, every thought that was to come to the mind of man, every deed which would be acted, the emotions generated, the seed of a man and drawn from him woman. One thousand generations then followed, sixty billions of persons, each unique, created were their body and their soul, living together for a time. This is the account of the first pillar, creation. Now the second is of deserts and mountains and rivers, and those who lived there, and those to whom you spoke. The Lord God plied through centuries of our time to testify to his faithfulness to those whom you have made. It was difficult for nature to understand supernature in thought, word, and deed. Man, desiring to reason naturally, did ultimately assign to myth all these ten millennia. In that time you did, in many ways, tabernacle with men. And we came to know your name and your ways upon the earth. A great event was planned and carried out. Your favored people were enslaved in Egypt 470 years. A great passing over of death freed all Israel, four millions, to cross the desert, cross the sea, and to wander foolishly 40 years in chains across the wilderness. They could not find obedience. They are a picture of all that would happen to us as you would draw us out of this world and into yours. This journey was the second pillar. And how was this accomplished? It was accomplished by love. The Father loves the Son and sent him to pay with his life for every wrong moment of these mass multitudes living in the confusion of wrong turnings as of those desert years. For the Lord Most High is the Holy One, before you, no evil shall be consented. In our personal sojourn upon the earth, we were to be in relation with you in everything we are, everything we do. Here in the third pillar, Jesus becomes us. How likely was it that any of this occur, that a man could save the world? All men were to know that God made this Son, Jesus, both Lord and Christ, the anointed Messiah, and beside him there is no other. We honor you and our hearts and ceaselessly proclaim you as the one and only Savior of the world can ever have. In none other name under heaven is salvation given. The very core of God's being is to offer friendship to those whom you would call your children. You are ever revealing to man your nature. Yet could we not become as God? Yet was it our unspoken desire, and also of Satan? And so we had like paths with him. It is a fatal error. How then live the divine life of the three adorable persons? We must be perfect and are not. Had the whole Adamic race lived flawlessly, we shall have merited heaven. But love for God cannot be so easily imputed. Truth. <laughs> thus would the Christ suffer, and thus would we also bear your cross the fourth pillar. The suffering was unto death, as is our own. It should not then be difficult to absorb that he who gave life to all could to himself give life from death. After Adam, the body was given to be mortal. Yet the soul of each man is eternal as unpresentable to God.
for our mind and heart are of the flesh. These eternal spirits never die, some on high and some below. Unto your children was sent your Holy Spirit to indwell us and to supplant our spirit with yours. This to live ever with you and to be joined to our same body glorified. Upon the last day of the universe, the Spirit was given to the Church as a body of men, 50 days after your resurrection, Pentecost, the sixth pillar. What then remains that all this be brought to its elaborate consummation, all the universe? The children of God remain with you forever. Those who despised the Lord and came not to the forgiveness of their sins, freely offered to all, could wish that they would simply be consumed. It is impossible for us to comprehend the magnificent transcendency of your holiness. We cannot cross to its separateness from man. Thus we must rely upon your word, which was ever true, that these will go down to the eternal fire of punishment, created for the devil and his messengers. The seven pillars of wisdom signify the whole course of the history of man. Yet still are we men there in your holy land. And so perhaps the life we will live with you is purely inexpressible as to live near and within your holiness. Amen. <laughs>